And my dear loyal specs, strap in, this one's gonna be a long one. Let's talk some Ark Survival Evolved, shall we? I can do a review of the game's good and bad points, but that's for a different video. No, right now, I want to talk about my favorite part of the game, the notes that you find from various NPCs around the world. In the base game, there are four characters, and then in the expansions, two new ones in addition to two of the previous four, that leave these notes all over the place, and they all follow a sort of single storyline from different perspectives. I did what I could to go get all of them, collate them into a coherent timeline, and then make that into an understandable story. At least I did my best. Let's take a look at it. The main game's notes come from four main characters. Helena, a modern-day biologist from Australia. Rockwell, a sort of colonialist-era chemist and erstwhile alchemist. Nerva, a Roman centurion from before the fall of Rome. And Mei Yin, a warrior woman from the Yellow Turban Rebellion era in China. There are also several tribes of people on the island that are mentioned, but we'll address those one at a time. It seems that Rockwell and Mayin are the first ones of these four to arrive, though I can't really decipher which of these two comes to the island first. Rockwell establishes himself as a chemist who's on neutral territory, and sort of acts as a mediator between tribes that have difficulties with each other. He amasses enough people to become his aides and assistants, and builds a manor, Rockwell Manor, which by the time we get to the Ark seems to be gone. Anyway, Mei Yin seems to have either come slightly after, or else taken fewer notes than, Rockwell, because her storyline before crossing with the others consists primarily of her killing some skeevy dudes, saving a village, and amassing a herd of raptors and building a shack in the jungle. Helena and Nerva seem to come after these two, and I am to believe that Nerva comes before Helena. He begins to amass a following of people under his command and, like any true legionnaire would, begins training them for conquest and war. War which he soon begins, with his first real attack being on the Black Thumb tribe, a tribe that had just so recently come to Rockwell for mediation in a dispute with the Painted Sharks tribe. Helena has been doing her best to keep her sanity together by making animal dossiers on the creatures she comes across on the island, being a biologist and all, and it seems that of the four characters we follow, she's the most level-headed and scientific. She starts to posit that the world she's in is unnatural and curated, thanks to some of the discoveries she's making, namely that many of the creatures she encounters should have been millennia apart in the fossil record, but live next to each other here. She first encounters Rockwell when she makes a trip into the frozen tundra of the north to study up there, where Rockwell is with the tribe of the Howling Wolves, the only real tribe to survive up that far north. Rockwell is working on a serum that allows people to withstand extreme cold, and the wolves are helping him with it. Helena and Rockwell, both being scientists, sort of take a liking to each other, and Rockwell suggests that she visits the painted sharks in the south, giving her a letter of recommendation to see her along. In his notes, he remarks at how bright the woman is, and she sort of echoes that sentiment. Finding scientific minds seems to be difficult on the Ark. Helena discovers that the painted sharks live on an island surrounded by megalodons, but that their gestation cycle is only a week long, and that they're impossibly easy to tame, and that despite there being so many predators around, they're not dying off, cementing her belief that something about this place is wrong. So back to Nerva, his army, which he now calls the New Legion, defeats the Black Thumb tribe wholly, and he sets his sights on another nearby tribe. That tribe has hired a mercenary, though, the now feared and scores strong Mei Yin and her trained dinosaurs. While she's escorting part of the tribe somewhere, she encounters the advancing New Legion and heartily defeats them with her superior tactics and riding, sending them reeling and running. This is the Legion's first real defeat, and one that will sit with Nerva forever. He retreats, but this is not the last they'll see of each other. After the successful protection and escort, Mayin takes some inordinate amount of time to circumvent the island on raptor back, finding to her dismay that it is indeed an island, and one that cannot be sailed or flown away from. There's some sort of weird mystic barrier around it. She says that the island is cursed, and retreats to her home in the jungle for now. Other tribes have started to hear of Nerva's conquest, and the weaker but smarter Golden Arrow tribe seeks to make a trade agreement with the new legion so as not to be conquered. Nerva calls for the signing of a treaty on neutral ground, only to reveal that it was a trap. He kills the Golden Arrow leader, and that tribe falls under his boot heel as well. 
Starting to get desperate, several tribes convince Rockwell to meet with Nerva and see about some kind of peace treaty. Rockwell consents, and upon meeting the men, sees that there's no use in his interfering with the New Legion's conquest. It doesn't benefit him to get muddled up in the conflict, so he withdraws, but his opinion of the men is actually quite high, despite Rockwell being an Englishman and sort of thinking poorly about legionnaire rule. Helena finally hears about the Beast Queen of the Jungle, and seeking to confirm her theories that the beasts of this place are unnatural, seeks her out to study her domesticated herds. She and Mei Yin get along decently, if quietly. Mei Yin writes about her encounter with what she calls the Demon King, which is what I assume to be a T-Rex, and how she was terrified of it and could not tame it. Rockwell's assistants point out that his experiments are taking their toll on him, and that he'd ought to take a vacation. He relents and goes on a spelunking expedition to try to get his mind off the fact that many local tribes have outlawed his experiments being tested on their people. In doing so, he discovers that the cave he's exploring is some kind of transporter which requires three key-like artifacts. He finds in that cave a similar artifact. It's not a key, but one that does look like it. And his obsession with the obelisks begins. When he returns to the manor, he sets back to doing his experiments, but the thought of those obelisks and the strange artifacts stays with him so much that he contacts and conscripts the Iron Brotherhood tribe to search for the rest of the artifacts for him while he works on his alchemy at home. During this period, the painted sharks start making attacks on the New Legion's coastal outposts. Nerva responds by getting ready for war on them, but they too have hired the Beast Queen, and the sharks and the Beast Queen drive the Legion back from the coastline driving deeper the nail of revenge into Nerva's heart. He finds out that Mei Yin is just a mercenary, though, and suddenly his plans change. He stages a false flag attack from Mei Yin against the sharks, and the two parties separate, allowing Nerva's new legion to decimate the sharks into dust. Mei Yin regrets that she can't help the sharks because they no longer want her help, but resolves that she must therefore become stronger since she's a likely target for the legion now. She tames the Demon King somehow, though it is not without losses. Helena and Rockwell meet up again, and Rockwell agrees with the unnaturalness theory sort of offhandedly, while expounding upon the obelisks to Helena. The two of them go to see how the Iron Brotherhood is doing, and they find that they've not only collected the artifacts, but are ready. With the might of the Brotherhood at his command, Rockwell and Helena take them through the portal to the Lair of the Spider Queen. They defeat her, and Helena and Rockwell get the first of three keys. It fits perfectly into the pedestal in the cave. Helena resolves that the three keys lead to the thing that must be controlling the island's ecosystem, and wants to gather all of them to investigate it. She convinces the Howling Wolves to track down the next set of artifacts to open the next obelisk, but they rightfully refuse to fight for her after hearing what happened to the Iron Brotherhood. She knows that she needs some help to take down whatever is behind the next obelisk, so she hires Mei Yin to help her with it. Rockwell, for his part, took his leave of Helena once they placed the first key. This time, it was Nerva that sought him out, though, and offered him the opportunity to become his personal advisor. He initially refuses, but then realizes that he could use their might to fight what's behind the obelisks, and agrees. He feeds Nerva talk that the obelisks could be sources of great power and might, and the warlike Nerva instantly agrees to search for them out and do the fighting. They catch wind that Mei Yin's forces are heading towards the next obelisk, and mobilize to beat her there. Mei Yin and Helena arrive first, though, and take care of the Gigantopithecus that lives behind the obelisk's transporter, obtaining the key with heavy losses, but thanks to the help of the Demon King. Just as they come back from the transporter, though, the wounded pack is confronted by Nerva's new legion, and without time to recover from their losses, they are crushed. Mayin escapes, but this is where she now starts her quest for revenge on Nerva. Helena, meanwhile, is captured and kept relatively safe because of her knowledge of the obelisks and their workings. Rockwell, however, does not take kindly to the fact that someone else was encroaching on the territory of the obelisks, a territory which he believes is his right to claim and his alone. And it was Helena, working with this beast queen? How dare she? He stays hidden from Helena's sight and ruminates on her so-called betrayal, while swearing that he will be the one who uncovers their secrets and nobody else. He continues to assist Nerva in finding the artifacts and preparing for the next obelisks, but Nerva also forces Helena to comply in assisting them as well. All the better really for Helena. She sees this as the only viable way to get to the last obelisk and open the third key. 
Some time passes with Helena in nervous care while Mei Yin recovers in hiding. Finally, the new Legion gather the required artifacts and go to fight whatever's behind the third obelisk's transporter. It's a dragon, by the way. All three keys in hand, Helena guides them to the hidden cave, and the Legion disappear through the portal. As they're gone, Mei Yin appears and rescues Helena, and the two of them follow Nerva through the teleporter only to find all of Nerva's men dead. Helena passes out somehow. During the time that Helena is passed out, it is implied that Nerva, whose rage at finding the space station has no great harnessable power, and Mei Yin, who's sworn to kill Nerva on this stage, have a fight and one or more of them die. Helena wakes up and finds herself on a great space station orbiting a planet, with the island that she was only just recently on floating in orbit above that planet. The whole thing was indeed some kind of contrived and curated experiment, but for what purpose? She sees a multitude more such arcs out in orbit, and using a console on the station accidentally transports herself to one of them. Shortly after she disappears onto another experiment, Rockwell follows them all onto the space station and marvels at the fantastic metal from which it's made. It completely obsesses him, and his focus becomes entirely on that metal. He too accidentally transports to another arc using a console. Whew, well that's the end of the main storyline there, my dearest specs. It's pretty long, but that's not all of it. There's the Scorched Earth storyline to address next, which we will talk about in another video, because if we put it in this one, it would be insanely long. Well, thank you guys very much for watching. I hope that you enjoyed it. Go ahead and click on the glasses icon here to become a spec yourself. You can click on either of these boxes that will get to you to more videos that I've made, and if you'd like to help support me more directly, you can click on the Patreon link that's there as well. It would help me a lot. Thanks a lot, and we'll see you next time.